So I don't want you to lose your mind on me over Star, but it's hard to argue the fact that that fans like Star Latula. The fans don't see the investment in the money. They don't. If you can say what you want about what he does schematically, the fact is that if you're not really paying attention to the very fine details of the game, Star looks like a big waste of money. I think that's a very easy argument to make for most fans that Star's a big waste of money. Are you not entertained? Subscribe now! He is. I think he's underpaid. You think he's underpaid? I think he's underpaid. For the contribution that that guy makes. Man, what did they put in that cup? Are you serious? Underpaid? For the contribution he makes? For the contribution he makes. He plays 60% of the snaps. To the overall scope of the defense. In those 60% of those snaps, look at what he contributes to this team. He's the second highest player on your team this year. Right, highest paid. I know. All right, let's. I know, he's, I know what he's paid. I know the contract, man, and they can get out of it if he doesn't perform. I understand that. We've talked about this. We've talked about it ad nauseum. This guy affects everything that goes on behind him. He affects Jerry Hughes because you have to double star. Hughes gets one up, one on one. What happens? Oh, he takes up two guys. That leaves Tremaine Edmonds free to make the tackle, which he had 120 of them last year. Matt Milano, a fifth-round pick, is a... Was a, was a Pro Bowl candidate last year before he went down because he was able to roam free, cover, and do things because stars in the middle. True, Kyle was in there too. But here's my point. Why I'm getting so upset. Aaron Donald was the defensive player of the year last year. Uh -huh. Who was playing next to him? Uh -huh. Who was playing next to him? And Dominican Sue. And Dominican Sue. Uh -huh. Sue was just eating bodies. Who is the ninth overall pick that has been compared to Aaron Donald? Yeah, at Oliver. At Oliver. Uh -huh. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a similar type front, have Star eat bodies, and Oliver's going to go eat all year. Now, if Star's not there, Oliver's not eating. Neither is Hughes. So those sack numbers that Star does not get, that Hughes and Oliver will get, should go to him. Now I'm going to fight you. Okay. At the Summit Park Mall, which everyone said, do not build a Bill Stadium there. <laughs> that was pretty unanimous. It was, that was pretty unanimous. We just were driving by it. That's why I said it. And it's a huge place. Like, it is. It is a big place. All right. So let's just take a look at, uh, at history here. Okay. Last season, <sighs> Starr had in total his lowest tackle history, his lowest tackle numbers of his career. Okay. Okay. All right. He did not see the lowest percentage of snap count in his career. Okay. He, he had the highest snap count? No. No. It, he he saw similar sack. Um, let, okay. Allow me to rephrase. Okay. There was one season where he saw a lower snap count percentage and had lower attack, lower. Oh, no. I am wrong. Allow me to rephrase yet again. So there's only been two seasons where Star didn't play 16 games. He played 14 full seasons, right? Terrible. From a snap count percentage, this was his second lowest season in snap count ever. Okay, The other season, he only played 14 games. Okay. This was by far his lowest tackle season all time. Okay, He only had 16 tackles all season. Okay, So I find it hard to believe very hard to believe, but very hard to believe. How many more tackles and pressures did Jerry have this year compared to last year? How many how many tackles did our middle linebacker have this year compared to last year? I mean, you're you're starting you're starting to get angry. I'm I just trying to tell you. I you want to go after statistics and you want to start with he had the lowest tackles. Well, if I'm taking on two bodies mm -hmm. and my middle linebacker tackles the guy for no no gain, well, I don't get a stat. Right. Well, That's what happens. I think there's a fair comparison to when you look at the dollar that Star is making and you look at Kyle or Darius and you say, well, that's what that dollar's worth. I want 
I want a guy who's impactful on the interior like Darius. And from a fan's perspective, I understand you. Won't, that's the investment that you think you're making. However, unfortunately, Star Latoulay has five, six, ten, eleven and a half sacks in his career. He's not asked to do that. I understand that. I'm just explaining. Why do you the think difference. that they paid him that much money? McDermott having the familiarity with him, going to a Super Bowl with Star. Mm-hmm. Why do you think they, they paid him that much money? Because they know how vital he is to the overall scope of that defense. Could they ask him to be a stud and, and go get sacks? And those, I don't know. The guy was, the, what, 11th overall pick? 13th, something like 14th overall pick? I mean, he was a first-round pick, and he's not he's not just a big, lumbering idiot that just takes bodies up in the middle. The dude is quick. The dude oh. can do things we need. What is he asked to do? McDermott only asked him to eat bodies. Push the pocket, eat bodies. Okay, I think so. I can one up everyone on the outside. I think we need to get a little bit more granular here. So when you start talking about eat bodies, okay, okay, I think, here's, here's I, think it's, All right. I, I think it's I think it's important to lay out what precisely you're talking about because again, schematically, schematically. there's a way there's a way to do it. Okay. There's a way that you're ineffective. Let me clean off my whiteboard and start writing stuff down for you now. All right, so here's the deal. You have the, this is the most simplistic way I can put it. Shut up. Okay. I didn't even say anything. Hey, I know you didn't. I, your eyes tell the whole story. Now, here's the here's the deal. you got five offensive linemen, four defensive linemen. If you're a guy of the school of thought like McDermott is and Fraser is, if you don't want to blitz a lot, you want to try to generate pressure with four. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got five versus four. You have Jerry Hughes, Ed Oliver, and Trent Murphy and or Shaq Lawson on the end up. You want to single those guys up. Those guys are good enough athletes that if you say to yourself, if they're singled up, they can generate pressure without blitzing. What do we need? We need someone to take on two bodies. So well, it's we a, need because to start. it's a numbers game, yeah, right? Yes. If you look at it, the offensive line is five guys deep. The, the yeah. our front four is again only four. So it is a numbers game. So if you're looking, if you're at, on the defense looking at the offense, you have Jerry Hughes on your right side. You'll have Starla Tulele. Then you'll have Ed Oliver. Then you'll have Trent Murphy. We'll, we'll put Murphy in. Okay. Sure. So what you're going to do is Star is going to shoot the A gap, which is the gap between the center and the guard. So forcing both the center and the guard to take him, mm-hmm. all right, which leaves that left tackle, Jerry Hughes is one-on-one with that left tackle, that right guard now is is now on Ed Oliver, one-on-one, and that right tackle has to block Murphy by himself. Right. So from that point, what you're doing is you have one-on-one matchups with players that can beat one-on-one matchups without blitzing. Right. So you can put seven guys in coverage if the rush doesn't get there in time. All right, so you're covering both ends. Now, if you want to blitz, teams that blitz don't have good defensive linemen. Oftentimes. They Oftentimes. Don't. They don't blitz. Or they blitz because they don't have a good defensive line. That's what start when I say eating bodies is he'll, he'll take the – now, if you're getting double teamed and Hughes comes around the corner and gets a pressure, or Hughes comes around the corner and gets a sack, or uh, like last year, Kyle Williams would break up the middle, he would get a sack or a pressure or a quarterback hit or something like that. He is causing those things to happen. Now, if you don't have a guy that eats up two bodies, you may have the guard kick out and try to help with Hughes in the tackle. You may have the center slide over to Oliver, who he's got to try to beat a double team. Mm-hmm. Or the opposite thing may happen with Murphy. So what are you forcing it to do? All right, well, now a back has to chip either Hughes or Murphy. Right. Back which has to stay you, in. Which you want. Yes, which a back has to stay in in order to try to block Oliver or, or provide some help to the guard. So by doing all that stuff, the back's not able to go out in coverage. So now your linebacker, who would normally go out with that back, is now back in coverage, covering a slant, or he may step in front of one. Who knows? That's why I say he's that valuable to the team. Okay, I think that's all fair. Now I wanna I wanna walk through a scenario because, um, again, you look at his strengths, right? And yeah. now you start looking at okay, well, what can teams do to counter that, right? His yeah. strength is simply being a big body and finding two guys to hug on the offensive line. Right, that's his strength. That's mm-hmm. what you're asking him to do. Because you know he's not getting to the quarterback. So no. what's to stop them from allowing Star, uh, like let's say he shoots the A-gap, right, and the center is going to double-team Oliver because they know that he's the real pass rush threat, right? Teams aren't stupid. They understand that. So you put the guard on Star. You right? still run a risk. You still you still think that runs You're still a running a risk because okay, like just as last year, if I think some teams tried to do that mm-hmm. with Donald and Sue. Yeah, where they would kick a guy over to try to help Sue, or try, try to help on Donald, yeah. and Sue would come in and, and just wreak havoc. While he probably didn't get the sack, he probably threw off the the 
He probably got the quarterback off his spot. He probably a little unfair comparison here because Sue is, is Sue is a little bit of a different animal. I, than yes, I understand, not, but I'm just saying I, for I, the I, roles I, they were asked I to play. Right? Yeah, similar roles. I agree I'm not with saying Ed Oliver. He hasn't played NFL down yet. I'm not right. saying he's Donald. I'm saying he's been compared to Donald, and that's the closest comparison I can get between two guys and the styles of play that they're going to be asked yeah. to do. Yeah, is uh, Sue and Donald and Oliver and, and Star. So what happens when? Oliver's not there, and it's Jordan Phillips in the rotation. Then Harrison Phillips is going to be with him. Oh, so you think it's a straight swap? I think I think they may do that. I don't know. I'm, obviously, it can go. Sure, you sure. Know, you sure. could put, uh, you could drop Zoe down, mm-hmm. and, and you know what I mean in, in those scenarios. Um, but those are like obvious passing downs. You start so, talking so about. let me ask this, right? Because you sure. want Star in for those third and third and short. Instances you right? actually said you don't want him in for third and short. Well, well, third and short, yeah, third and short, other right. third and long. Yeah. yeah, no, third and long. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't out. want That's star fine. in there. Um, but in third and short, you want star there, right? Oliver, I'm thinking you probably don't. Right, third and you're, short. Third and short. You got bigger bodies to put in, right? So you would put, you you would put, uh, <laughs> Wilson Phillips in. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> One of them is as big as defense tackle. <laughs> But um, I I would go with Star and then Jordan Phillips. Okay, that's what I would do. I, I can't in argue short, that. in short distance that's, situations. That's, However, I put Harrison on the nose. If it was yeah, really short, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. But it, here's 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 what I'm getting to, right? Okay. So we know that they always run rotations on the defensive line. So. Since Star's only playing less, since Star's only playing about fifty percent of snaps over his career, he's played about fifty percent of snaps. That's okay. how McDermott likes to use him. That's how he's going to be used. Okay. So we're seeing Oliver in in similar format. We're going to see him in forty to fifty percent range, most likely. Right? Does he really play exclusively with Star in in first and second situations? Because here's the thing: you know you want Star on third down. So where are you losing star with Oliver? Because we're talking about this, like this is the way it's going to go, and really on fi- only on 50% of the snaps, this is how this is going to go. So if you want Oliver and star together... Well, if 50% that, of the snaps they play are 100% of the passing downs, I'm fine with it. Well, Which is unlikely, which I know. Is, again, which but, is unlikely. So in what scenarios are you doing this, right? Because you know you're losing star on third, third and short, right? So overall, that's going to take about fifteen percent of the fifty that he's playing. So it drops well, him down to thirty-five well, percent that are possible passing downs. I understand. So, I understand exactly what you're saying. Like, I, here's what I'm saying: they're not the fifty percent of the time they're both on the field. Let's just say it's not going to be a hundred percent of the passing downs. I understand that. It doesn't mean. Also, the Bills have blitzed one out of every five downs mm-hmm. in in 2018. All right. Will that number decrease now because of the, the, the combinations you have? I don't know. You bolstered up the secondary. You bolstered up the defensive line. I don't know what you're planning on doing, and you have 27 linebackers. Like I don't understand. That strong side linebacker yeah. thing is still a big question. Yeah, it is still a question. So that's what you have. Um, as far as what combinations you could play along that that front, those four together result in you not having to blitz. So if there's times you don't want to blitz, that's fine. If you want to bring in Harrison Phillips, take Star out, and put Oliver in, and you want to send Milano or Edmonds on the corner, okay, that's fine. So you're saying that saying those four, those four, you don't have to blitz. to see a blitz. No, you're on. Unli- you, you you could play coverage. So what what does that mean? Third and mid range, because that line could still play the the run if you mm-hmm. needed them to. Third third and, and mid to long. All right. If you get a team behind schedule, I think you, that's when you flip them out and give them a rest. All right, maybe you keep Oliver in, take Star out. Mm-hmm. All right, maybe you put Phillips in there to rush, or you put you put Oliver next to um, Alexander mm-hmm. to rush to try to get a you know if it's third and like more than ten. Uh, I think, but, but I think you you come out starting first and second down to try to set the tone of the game with those two guys. Maybe play them on third because hopefully it's a third, three and out. If not, then you start rotating them. Then you start bringing them in. Say okay. What are we doing? We're here a little weak here. We want to try this here. They're trying to do this, blah, 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 and all sorts of stuff. Hey, we're not really getting a rush with four. We got a blitz. But doesn't, do that, but doesn't that start to tip your hand 
as a defense when you look at the front four and say, okay, don't have to worry about the blitz. And then you start seeing that line rotation come I'm not in. saying you don't have the blitz. Right. It just oh, no, I'm it. just saying you don't have the blitz with those four. I'm not right. saying you can't. It's not like you don't. Right. That's what. That's where the genius of being a defensive coordinator comes in mm-hmm. and how you arrange certain things you're going to do. They could send Milano and Edmonds with that line. Mm-hmm. Just what? What, am, what are we going to do? It was jailbreak. You know what I mean? Can you imagine that? I just, I just, I can't wait to see the one time when Edmonds and, and Hughes are on the same side, and that left tackle is oh, just good luck. Going good poop, luck, dude. Going poo poo in his pants. To me, that's a situation where, um, you know, you're in nickel coverage, right? Yeah. You're in, you're already in nickel, and as soon as you see that running back flank out. Right, as soon as they motion the wide receiver out or the running back out to go five wide, mm-hmm. you're like, "Let's go! This is our shot. That yeah. safety blanket's gone. <laughs> Let's go!" <laughs> and just watch the quarterback go. Uh, I think if you have like, a quarterback what, what that's not mobile, yeah, it's not a very mobile quarterback where you don't have to worry about him running. You send six with Milano and Edmonds and those four monsters and play five man across. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. But, again, Star, I do believe Star is underappreciated, right, for the role that he plays. Is he worth the big dollar contract? This is really going to be the first year that you see whether there's an investment there or not. Mm. Because you had Kyle already. You brought in Harrison Phillips, who was okay. Kyle-esque. Yeah, he was, he was okay last season. Yeah. He was fine. You know? He performed better. He was a third-round pick. He was a third-round pick. So, yeah. he was fine. Um. But this is going to be the season where you see if the star investment was worth it because they made a huge investment in Oliver looking at that tandem. It, it's it's part of the conversation. It's part of what made Oliver so attractive to them was, listen, we've got star here for the next three, three years, so let's let's go lock down the interior of, of our defensive line. Let's let's go do it. And, and this will be the first time we see whether that star contract is worth it. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, he was. It was frustrating last year at the end of the season to see us get gashed up the gut. But um, you're a rookie middle linebacker. I mean, it's not all him. And, and, and a first-year starter in Milano. Well, I mean, I, like I said, I know I was attributing a lot of the statistics. And, second and, year, and, second year starter in Milano, yeah. I guess. Well, he started the second. Nah, he started the last half nah. of the year. Before, eh. No, I know, I know. I know. I attribute a lot of statistical breakdown and this statistical success that some of the players on the team had because of Star. There's not a, all of it was him. Obviously. Right. There's a little inference there. But I'm saying <clears throat> not all of the bad things that happened either were him. Right. Like you know, they could have been running away from his gap. It's mm-hmm. not his, not his deal. Uh, but I, it's, can the season get here already? I know. Uh, we're close, dude. We're close. Closer than we were yesterday. Mm-hmm. Closer than the week before. Yeah. True. 